Hey everybody, I'm here with the Kawasaki Terex and it's just about due for its first servicing. So I'm going to do a video changing the engine oil, the front differential, and the rear differential, which is also the rear wet brake. The engine oil, I got this uh, Kawasaki as a little kit. It comes with a filter, a crush walker, and four quarts of 1040 Kawasaki oil. For the front differential, it's going to be Kawasaki gear oil. It's just regular 8090 gear oil, but it's just Kawasaki branded. Um, it just looks good. Gear oil is gear oil in my opinion. And for the rear, it's gear and wet brake oil, which the rear brakes in this is like similar to a brakes on a tractor, so it needs this specific oil. So first things first, I already took it around the pasture a few times in a quick ride up the street to get the oil hot and everything flowing and mixed up in there. So any, if there's any debris from uh, the initial break in, it'll all be flowing out and replaced with fresh oil. Under here, to get to the uh, oil filter, gonna have to remove this plate right here. And these are gonna be four 10 millimeter screws, or bolts rather. It's a bit nicer having this up on the, uh, the trailer like this and not, not going around in the rocks. And that way I also know that it's level. Little washers with them. I probably could have made for pulling this up on some ramps, make it a little uh, raised up a little more, but this will work just fine. I'm just looking to get this done right now because we're kind of decided to do a last minute trip. We're looking to leave in the morning. So right here where it's been removed, you can see the oil filter there. And just behind here is gonna be the drain plug there. The drain plug itself is gonna be a 17 millimeter. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you got a pan under there and you wanna make sure that if there's any dirt around the drain plug, you wanna clean it off. You don't wanna risk any uh, contamination in there. And if you watch my last oil change video, like always, I always get covered in oil. It just happens. It's nice to see the oil looks nice and clean coming out of there. Let that drain for a second. And for take the filter off, I like using one of these little things. Use a strap branch or some pliers if you want some oil filter pliers but this usually works pretty good for me this is the uh, first time I'm servicing this machine but my last Kawasaki Terex was just about identical since this is a really small air fil uh, oil filter excuse me I'm using these little channel lock oil filter pliers they should be doing just fine for this I hope you can see up in there because I can't really see the camera right now. It's loosened up. Should be hand tight by now. Drain out a little bit. Get the new filter. 
These Kawasaki uh, oil change kits actually come with a little set of gloves, but uh, I'm not typically one to wear the little rubber gloves. I feel like I'll just make a mess of them anyway. And I actually purchased a spare belt to take with the machine as well. And the kit also comes with a little paper funnel, so you got just about everything you need. Um, I'm going to fill the put a little bit of oil in the oil filter. I'm not going to fill it all the way because it goes on horizontal. It'll just dump out. Uh, I'm going to make sure I lube the gasket up decently. See where it goes on. Let's thread it right on there. It's about an oily hand tight for now. Give it probably an additional half turn. And we got a new crush washer for the drain plug. Slide that right on. Reinstall the drain plug. Still dripping a tiny bit, it'll be all right. Snug it up with the 17 millimeter. Doesn't need to be excessively tight. Next, you just got to put this uh, little piece of skid plate back on. I like to put them on just slightly threaded by hand first so it doesn't come out of alignment and they all end up lining up when you tighten them down. Really looking forward to having a new shop to be doing this stuff in. Soon enough. One. Might not be the best way to do it, but it's definitely better than the, the rocks that I was on the other day. Next, the oil fill is going to be right here under the driver's seat. Move this rubber flap. That's going to be your oil plug there. Um, from what I've read too, the dipstick on the oil fill is threaded in there. And I believe you're going to want to take that out and put it in with some Loctite. Because I've heard stories of that dipstick falling down into the case and causing uh, complete damage. This paper funnel really isn't the greatest, but it's right here, and I don't feel like running back up to the house. And I believe from last year's experiences that this takes all four quarts. I'm going to put all four of them in, and then hopefully that'll be good. If not, I'll be draining a little bit out. But I think the four is right where you want to be. I did just check the manual for reference and it says 3.8 quarts when the filter is not removed. I don't know why you would change your oil without changing the filter, but it says 4.2 quarts when filter is removed and the case is dry. So the even four quarts should be perfect because every last drop isn't going to end up out of there. Not only do I enjoy making this kind of content in these kind of videos, but 
God forbid if I ever have a warranty claim and Kawasaki says I'm not doing the maintenance on it, here it is. Um, anybody that's ever had warranty claims, I've heard that Kawasaki's been very good about it. And Kawasaki does have one of the best warranties out of any utility vehicle with three years, which is kind of almost unheard of. Most uh, manufacturers just do six months and some of them one year tops, but three years is, is pretty solid. And you can even buy another three years if you want. So that's going to be it for the engine oil. So if you're going to change your engine oil, you're going to need the 10 millimeter for the skid plate removal and the 17 millimeter for the drain plug and something small enough to be able to get that small oil filter off. Um, these pliers work great. Um, I'm sure they make smaller strap wrenches, things like that. Um, if you had a big pair of channel locks, I'm sure they would do just fine getting it off. Gonna go to the rear uh, differential and a uh, wet brake next. It's a little bit uh, dirty right now because pastures are a little bit muddy. I typically don't do any mud in with this thing. I'm not into it, but you can't avoid getting dirty. So I'm just gonna spray off around the fill plug with some brake clean. Get that nice and clean. Get the pan clean. Remember the drain plugs right there on the bottom. Give that a good spraying. For the rear brake drain plug, it's going to be a 14 millimeter. And I'll show you loosening that up. I have the pan ready. comes the oil all over myself like normal. Nope, not too much. This oil actually looks pretty clean. These oils in the differentials are pretty thick, so I'm gonna let the rear drain for a little bit and I'm moving on to the front now. But I'll just put this towards the end of the video when I'm doing the front differential. I'm not gonna mix it up. But you definitely wanna give it a little bit extra time to drain because it is pretty thick stuff. I'm going to reinstall the plug in the rear. Snug them up. You don't want to over tighten these. They will strip out. Going to the 19 here for the rear. The fill port. Nope. Little gasket on there. Put that back on. So the way this rear works, um, you want to make sure on a level surface, and I've already made sure this trailer deck is level, it's hydraulic, I'm able to adjust it like that, but you fill it up, and if it starts coming out, that's full. So you really can't overfill it. So these bottles are kind of convenient, because you can squirt it right in there. And you definitely want to make sure you're using the, the wet brake formula. Whether, I don't know what else out there other than Kawasaki makes this stuff, but I find it easy just to buy the Kawasaki branded stuff. It kind of covers me. So that looks like it's just about ready to come out. I'll put an extra squirt. Right where it wants to be. And there it is dripping out now. Reference, just to reference it, it shows it right here. It shows the level, oil level in there would be just coming out. Let it drip just a tiny bit more. I think it's about done. Whatever else is dripping is just what's on there. 
Straighten this cap up. Make sure you didn't lose your uh, little O-ring on there. Again, you don't need to be super tight on these. So that would be it for the rear differential. You're going to need a 14 millimeter for the drain plug, a 19 millimeter for the fill port, and one quart of Kawasaki wet gear and brake oil. So I've got a separate drain pan now, and the front differential is going to be a 14 millimeter drain plug, just like the back. Um, I'm going to give this this a little spray, just like I did with the rear. And this one's a bit cleaner, but make sure it stays as clean as I can. Here's the fill port here. That's an inch and a sixteenth. This one loose. I think I'm getting pretty good at this one hand thing. Set that drain plug aside. Now this front looks to be drained out well and we're back to it just getting an occasional drip enough to move the pan out of the way put the plug back in just snug it up you don't want to overdo it for the fill port on this, it's going to be an inch and a sixteenth or a 26 millimeter, I believe. They're both the, uh, the same, but it's a large nut on there. If you put an adjustable wrench on there or even a pair of channel locks, I think you'd be fine. your o-ring still in there set that down in a clean area this one here is a little bit tougher to fill just due to where you got to put the bottle oh. helps if you pull the seal off first so I got the bottle kind of facing up and it will just squirt some in like that A arms get in the way and you'll have to end up crushing the bottle and there it goes I think it just started to come out because I was filling it good but a little more and you can see it just starting to come out the spillage but you could see right in there how the oil sitting level with the uh, the edge of the fill port there Just snug this cap back in here a quarter turn or so until you can feel snug okay so if you haven't seen the previous video with the Kawasaki I explained why we got a 2021 when we had a 2020 this was my old one that was in the fire I mean as you can see it is toast so the belts from the tires um, and the aluminum that was on it is just melted through the steel the front diff was this thing there's nothing left luckily I did have a policy specifically for this our uh, business policy did not cover any type of equipment or anything like that so that's gonna be about it for the maintenance for the Kawasaki Terex 
today we went over the engine oil, the front differential, and the rear differential with the wet brake. Uh, one other thing I really would like to do is change out the air filter. I don't really like the factory paper air filters in these. They've been known to cause failures. Um, I want to replace it with a uni filter. That's what I had in my previous model. It's a foam filter and you spray it with oil so it really gets every bit of contaminant out before it can get inside your engine. But those are in low demand right now and I was actually able to find one. I had to pay a, a little bit extra money for it, but I got it and it's on its way. One more thing that I would like to do with this, I, I don't typically do any type of water riding or anything like that, but the vent for the fuel tank is in a bad spot. So if you ride through even uh, shallow water, it's got a chance of taking in some water and it'll even suck in dust. There's no filter on there. So you want to do that to help keep contaminants out of your fuel tank. It's uh, about $20 from Brute Performance, I believe. Um, and that's one thing I will be doing soon. But if we go riding tomorrow, there's not going to be much dust, water, any of that. We know where we're going. It's really uh, calm, easy trails. So I really hope you enjoyed this video tonight. We're really hoping to enjoy this thing tomorrow and hit the trails. So if you wouldn't mind, please like, subscribe, and comment. Tell me what you think, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Have a good night, everyone.